We all want to be members of a group. We want to feel secure in a group. And we all want to move into groups of higher status. And shame is what we experience when we feel that our membership in a group is in jeopardy or when we try to enter a group of higher status and we're rejected. Also, it's a shame we experience when we think those things are happening and they're not happening, you know. If we get a little paranoid, we think people are rejecting us. We feel shame, but they're not really doing it. And also, when we uh, feel shame empathically, so we see someone being mistreated and we feel shame for them. Acts of violence that seem to have no obvious motivation are motivated by shame. And I say this is my theory, but there are actually a couple of people, uh, James Gilligan, for one, who, who states this in his book on violence, his three books on violence. He says that uh, all violent acts are, motivi are motivated by shame. And um, well, I will go a step further and say that violent acts are motivated by unmanaged shame. So the question is really how much shame the person has accumulated, whether it's a trait or a state. State shame is something that a, that a person, a normal person, if there is such a thing, would experience now and then. A person who has been shamed continuously and awfully for a long time will experience trait shame. It's like trait anger. It's like you say, whoa, that guy's angry all the time, you know. This is someone who's ashamed all the time. The best way to manage shame is to have a person you trust completely, a person you can open your heart to, who you can tell about what just happened. So I know when I'm in a, shame, a bad shaming experience, uh, what I feel a need to call up my wife and say, hey, listen to what just happened to me. And then I tell her about it and she makes sympathetic noises. And I feel better because I feel like she's given me her attention, she's listened carefully, and she understands what I'm feeling. I think if you look at the school shooters and also domestic terrorists, you'll see people who are very alienated. They have very few friends, um, and the friends they have, they don't discuss uh, shaming issues, which are often very personal. Um, they often have very poor verbal skills. They have difficulty articulating things, and possibly they have difficulty naming their feelings. You know, that's one thing that shrinks who work with kids always talk about, you know, how does this make you feel? Um, so they can't manage the shame, so it tends to move toward um, managing it through a, a, what Donald Levinson calls an attack other mode. You want to get rid of your shame by attacking someone else. There are other necessities also for violent behavior. Often they'll have a model of someone who has behaved violently, and also they'll have a gun fetish which is not uncommon in this country where nearly everyone has a gun.